the elegance of a swan landing on a tranquil lake. Captain Elena Mirov checked the readings on her console, her eyes flicking between the data and the lush green planet spinning serenely in front of them. Looks like we've arrived at XR 157, folks, she announced, her voice calm but carrying an undertone of excitement. According to the Intergalactic Council, this is supposed to be one of the most fearsome death worlds discovered in the last century. Her crew, a seasoned group of explorers from Earth, chuckled among themselves. They'd faced real threats back home. Super hurricanes, mega quakes, polar vortexes, and creatures that were the stuff of nightmares. Prepare for landing. Let's see what this death world has to offer, Elena said, her smile betraying her skepticism. As they descended through the atmosphere, Dr. Liam Kentz, the team's xenobiologist, peered through the sensors. The atmospheric composition is almost identical to Earth's. Nitrogen, oxygen, trace gases, even the gravity is a near match. Where's the death in this death world? muttered Sofia Ramirez, the ship's engineer, scanning the surface for a landing spot. They touched down in a lush meadow, surrounded by forests and distant mountains. The air was sweet and fresh, a gentle breeze playing across the grass. Let's suit up, team. Standard protocol until we know what we're dealing with, Elena ordered. Stepping onto the surface, they expected danger at every turn. Instead, they found a world teeming with life, none of which seemed particularly threatening. Small, colorful creatures flitted through the trees, and larger herbivores grazed peacefully. This is a death world? Liam asked incredulously as he observed a rabbit-like creature hop by, completely indifferent to the humans. It's more like Earth's nature reserves on a quiet day, Sophia laughed. As they explored, they stumbled upon a settlement of the local species, the Zorathi. The aliens were bipedal, with shimmering blue skin and wide, expressive eyes. Their expressions turned from curiosity to outright shock as they beheld the humans. You, you walk our lands freely? No fear of the Gorak beasts? The venomous Threl vines? One Zarathi stammered, his antenna-like appendages twitching. Elena, using her translator, replied, We've encountered a few creatures and plants. They seem quite docile, actually. The Azrathi looked at each other, disbelief etched on their faces. But this is a death world! The Gorak beasts have the deadliest venom known to us! Another exclaimed. Liam, amused, joined the conversation. On Earth, we have creatures whose venom can kill a human in minutes, and plants that can cause severe pain or death if just touched or ingested. The Srathi were astounded. But the seismic activities? The quakes and volcanic eruptions? Sophia chuckled. Where we come from, we have places where the ground shakes so hard it can topple cities and volcanoes that can darken the skies for months. The leader of the Azrathi, who introduced himself as Thalos, invited them to a council meeting. It was clear the aliens were reevaluating everything they knew about death worlds. At the council, Elena spoke diplomatically. We mean no disrespect, but by our standards, XR-157 is quite a benign place. Earth has taught us to be resilient and adaptable. Thalos, his pride wounded but his curiosity piqued, asked, Could you show us? Teach us how to make our world stronger? Liam and Sophia exchanged a look, then nodded. First, Liam started, diversity in flora and fauna is key. Your Gorak beasts are predators, yes, but they have no competition. On Earth, predators challenge each other, which strengthens them all. Competition fosters resilience, Sophia added. Also, your plants like the Threl vines are isolated. On Earth, dangerous plants often grow in clusters, creating natural barriers and hazards. And your seismic activities, Elena chimed in. They're rare and mild. On Earth, some regions have minor quakes daily, which forces our buildings and communities to be much more durable. Thalos listened, fascinated. And your people? How do they survive such a world? With knowledge and preparation, Elena replied, education about the dangers and constant innovation to live with them. We learn to respect nature's power, Liam said, and we adapt constantly. The Zarathi were silent, absorbing the lessons. Thalos finally spoke. We have much to learn from you, humans. Your world sounds terrifying. We have much work to do in the future, thank you, humans. We know that you have busy schedule raiding all the planets in the galaxy. 